we get started with the very first game and the very first game is by King Hunter and King Hunter was playing with the black pieces so let's get into it you're playing the French here as you usually do we've seen some of your games with the French already you play this move knight f6 here maybe I've commented on it before but I think it's not the best move here I would recommend you to look into c5 or bishop e7 Knight f6 might be objectively fine, but I think practically the positions are easier to play for white. And we'll see actually what I mean also in this game, I think. So your opponent plays the main line here, which I also played myself with white for a while. So this is all known, but now he plays a new move, or at least a move I hadn't seen before and probably you hadn't seen before either. So what to do when your opponent plays a new move in the opening? Or, well, at some point, right? This means whenever the moment comes when the first move is on the board that you haven't seen before, it's a critical moment. Critical moment means you want to take some more time to consider what you do next. And here you play queen c7, which is an inaccuracy. So bishop f4, this is what white wants in general. He wants to trade those bishops so that he has better access to the e5 square for his knight. And actually it's funny because usually it goes like this. Castle, this is the main line, queen c7, stopping bishop f4, that's the idea of queen c7. And now white actually uses, I mean this is one line, he plays bishop g5, then bishop h4 and then bishop g3, so actually uses three moves to get to this diagonal h to b8. So there must be a reason why he cannot play bishop f4 right away. There must be a drawback, right? So your task was to find out what is this drawback. And after queen c7 there's no drawback for white. He just won some tempi compared to this other line I just showed. So the way you can exploit that is by taking on f4 and then giving a check. That's the difference. White hasn't castled yet. And uh, now this check is actually uncomfortable. Of course, he doesn't want to go king f1, lose his right to castle, so queen d2 is forced. Take. King has to take because the knight has to defend the pawn on d4. <coughs> and now simply castle and you have different ideas. There's maybe an idea to go g5 and there's also the idea knight e4, knight g4 and black has just equalized comfortably. For example, rook h e1, seemingly stopping knight e4, but still it can be played because rook takes f4 is possible. And now the bishop is hanging on e4, pawn, pawn is hanging on d4, and white actually uh, has to be a little bit precise here because he's losing a pawn, but due to his active king, position is equal. But this is just comfortable equality for black. So this is the takeaway here, if your opponent plays a new move or especially if it's a new move in a position you know, where you know that castle is the main move here, then take your time and search for what could be wrong with this move and how you can exploit that. Alright, bishop f4, queen c7, queen d2. <clears throat> Now you play bishop d7, nothing wrong with this move, but um, why play bishop d7 here? Uh, in general, I like the principle that do play the moves first, which have the highest priority, or which you have to play anyway, no matter what. And one move you have to play anyway here is short castle, no doubt about it. You're not going to castle queenside, and so you should play this move first. For example, now if your opponent plays rook c1, like he did after bishop d7 in the game, you can take on f4 and now you have this option g5 <clears throat> because after knight takes g5 you win the center pawn on d4 which is of course a very important pawn in this position. So just as a little remark, I mean there's really nothing wrong with bishop d7, it just stroke me as a little bit strange to play bishop d7 first. All right, castle, bishop g3, rook a8, that makes a lot of sense, castle, queen b8, 
getting out of the C file makes also a lot of sense, A3. Now you played at knight h5, which is interesting and possible. The alternative would be to go e5, which is actually what you kind of played for with your last moves, right? It would be a logical move. But this is the problem, and this is what I was talking about when I said in the opening that knight f6 is maybe not the best move in this position on the third move. Because even when you manage to get this e5 break in, you're still slightly worse. Because you have still the worst pawn structure. You have this isolated pawn on d5 and your king is a little bit more open than the white king. You have three pawn islands, one, two and three, whereas white only has two. So the pawn structure is just more comfortable for white and I don't see how white has a lot of risk here. So this is why I was saying this whole structure that usually this third knight of six move leads to seems a little bit worse for black. So you might want to reconsider your opening choice here. <clears throat> okay, you didn't go e5. Like I said, knight h5 also looks quite interesting, quite possible. Knight g5. Now you went back, knight f6. This is all pretty normal stuff here. Now knight g4, h3, rook takes f3, takes rook f6. This is all good. It's all good, all good. Up until this point, I think this is the critical moment in the game. It was like rather long sequence of more or less obvious or forced moves. And now if you reach this position, you need to find a new plan. What can you do, right? How can you continue from here? And it seems to me you chose the wrong plan. Or I'm not sure what you want to achieve with this king h8 move, but it certainly didn't help your position, rather the opposite, right? As we'll see in the remainder of the game, it benefited your opponent. So, actually, there's a tactical way to go over about this position is to play e5. I mean, this is the move you want to play if possible, and here it is actually possible. The point is that after d takes e5, knight takes e5, f takes e5, now you give this check. And once the king moves from g1, then the rook is hanging on f1, you win the exchange. So this obviously doesn't work for white. And, well, he cannot just let it stay like that. Uh, the bishop takes g4, e4, I mean, this would be absolutely wonderful for black. So he needs to play f takes e5, knight takes e5. Now d takes e5, of course, would transpose. But he can play this intermediate move, rook takes f6. And now queen takes f6, and now he can take the piece. And you don't have anything better than to give a perpetual check. But this is objectively your best option in this position. It is what it is and white also needs to take this draw. So e5 was a way to, to reach a draw here to equalize fully. And this is what you should do because strategically your position is a little bit uh, dodgy since white has very good control over the square on e5 with his pawns. And his minor pieces are better than your minor piece, or at least the bishop is much better than your bishop. So if you give, like in the game, if you give white some moves to consolidate, then you'll be in trouble. Um, another plan would be to exchange the bishops. Like I said, you have a worse bishop than your opponent, so it would make sense to exchange it, but it's not that easy. Because here white can play a move like rook fe1. Which looks odd at first, but the idea is that after bishop g6, now white can go g5 without you being able to remove your rook with tempo from the attack and you lose material here. So bishop e8 is interesting, it's an interesting idea, but maybe white, can, white has a good reaction. There's actually another idea here. It's to go queen e7. What's the point behind that? Let's say white plays like he did in the game, queen e3. Now you can go g5 which is quite nice to attack the pawn on f4. And the point is, of course, that after f takes g5, you could take an f1 and then take back on g5. Probably with the pawn makes just perfect sense. Oh, first, of course, white has to take back and now h takes g5. And 
and this is definitely an improvement for you you can now think about e5 again and white has this doubled pawns on the g5 so even if you didn't see this tactical solution e5 um, you could have played something else to prepare g5 um, because otherwise as we as we'll see in the game white always has this option himself to go g5 <clears throat> all right so so this move king h8 i would say it's both a tactical oversight because you didn't think about e5 probably it wasn't one of your cannon moves even though these breaks you should always have an eye on them um because it's just awesome if they work really it changes the whole nature of the position in this case it's only a draw but in other case it could be much more and actually we see uh, <laughs> you will see a similar break for your opponent in the next game um and then it seems to me you also well didn't consider this plan of going queen e7 followed by g5 or preparing g5 in some way which is okay it's not that easy to see but you have to consider that you have to do something here if you just sit and wait you're going to be in trouble because you're strategically you're worse all right king h8 queen e3 now you go for this plan I'm not sure why you didn't go for this plan immediately why king h8 was necessary and if you're watching right now maybe you could answer in the chat um, but otherwise not sure why bishop why uh, not bishop e8 immediately all right rook f3 is a strong move by your opponent and now bishop g6 just a tactical mistake just doesn't work and what i'm guessing is that you overlooked that check that happened so you need to go king g8 back so you see already king h8 wasn't helpful um but also rook h3 and this g5 threat is becoming quite unpleasant so probably your best bet is to sacrifice the exchange here on f4 but obviously white is better here being an exchange up still we always have to put up the most resistance we can all right bishop g6 g5 and yeah there's really not much else to do here i think bishop takes d3 i looked at but it's also an exchange i mean you can put up resistance but it's it's also an exchange so white should bring this one home so this was just i mean here you're already under pressure because white has these ideas of rook h3 g5 and so on it's very easy to play for for white not so easy for you and then you made it another tactical mistake and then now it's just game over <clears throat> so i would say really two things decided this game for one your choice of opening which like i said i think it's easier to play for white and you always have to find like dynamical mm, continuations to compensate for your strategical disadvantage of having the worst pawn structure and of course the other moment was after king after queen d2 instead of playing king h8 there was something else you needed to do and i think it came down to the tactics really just not seeing this e5 move and then okay even if you're under pressure you just you just gave it away uh, very easily with bishop g6 when the opponent could just win on the spot and also tactics you probably uh, I'm guessing that you didn't see that white can play this check first before he takes back. Okay, so this is just simple tactics and um, you need to see those things in your games uh, because otherwise it just costs you too many.